Hey yo, what's good guys? That video here. Today we got Alex Horn, something like that. Either way, let's get to it. Never heard of this guy, Alex, in my life. So first time I'm ever seeing this dude, eight out of ten cats. You already know this show's fun, so let's get to it. Well, over in Dictionary Corner, we have Alex Horn and the Horn section. Okay, so his name's Horn. Nobody. Introduce us to the band. Well, this is, yeah, we could only fit half the band, so we've got the worst half, and we've got, um, <laughs> I'm doing my oldest friend, we've got Damn. Ben on drums and John on... Joe. Joe on trumpet. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and you'll know Will Collier on bass from the Will Collier Septet, the, uh, the jazz ensemble that was once described... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, off the jump, this guy's funny as Okay, I like this dude. Already, I like this dude. And with Alex, of course, is Susie Dent. Uh, Susie is incredibly bright, but can you tell me this? My thermos flask keeps hot drinks hot and cold drinks cold, but how does it know? There's going to be a funny answer to that one. What is mm. it? Are you asking me? Yeah. Bob, there's going to be... Um... <laughs> Bro, I, I've literally seen that clip before, but I haven't seen, like, the initial part of it. That's... Alex, what's the best thing about being in a shit jazz band? The, sh uh, oh. the thing is, because we all live together, and the best thing is, they all have their instruments, obviously, constantly, so I never need to listen to my Walkman, because they're just, they're with me. So, like, say if we're in the lift, and there's no music in the lift, I can just say, Ed, would you mind? And it just makes it, it makes it more atmospheric. Or when, sometimes at night, my wife likes me to kiss her, and I'm, it's not my forte, so I, oh. I get nervous. <laughs> but Pedro's always by the bed, and he sort of starts. <laughs> the best one is, well, with this bass, quite often I'll, I'll sort of say something at breakfast, and, uh, and it's not funny, it's a bit awkward, but he can do a little sort of bass lick, like on Seinfeld, and it makes it sort of seem funny. Like, I got a letter recently, it said, uh, your results are back and your rash is both serious and aggressive. Ah! Bruh. Okay, Alex, you were a champion on the actual countdown. <laughs> Will you be able to actually help Rachel this evening? No. Because uh, ah! it was very lax. There was a lot of cheating, there was a lot of steroids, and there was a dark, <laughs> a dark period for countdown. So you were the Lance Armstrong of the countdown? Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> Not a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Can you kick us off maybe with some music? Something musical? You got yeah, a band? Well, well, Joe said not to worry too much, so we wrote something in the, uh, the minibus on the way up. And it's a true story, but it doesn't have a... We haven't given it a name yet. It's untitled, like my, um, like my dog, like my pet dog. You haven't named your dog? Huh? Just dog. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> he knows no different. It's a dog. He thinks he's Doug, but it's dog. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we do our song? Bruh. You... <laughs> Bruh. That's tough. Let's do a song, yeah. Play us. Is it the police? Is it the buzz? Is it the feds? Is it the rotters? Is it the cops? Is it the bill? Is it the five O? Is it the pigs? Is it the filth? Is it the narcs? Is it some bobbies? Is it Bergerac? No! What the fuck's this have to do with me? The fuck? So is Bobby a word for cops? The fuck? The fuck? What, what the fuck your boy getting called out? Those who don't know, my name's Bobby. So, yeah. But, bruh! Oh, it's a highway maintenance vehicle! <laughs> And now it's Christmas, obviously it's Christmas. Mm. Um, I was wondering if you could play us something sort of a bit Christmassy, the horn section. Yes, we could sing a carol. Oh, terrific, I would love that. I've got one of these. Okay, here we go, this is for you, Jimmy. A, B, C, D, <laughs> E, F, G, H, I, J, K, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. No, no, no. I, I don't know what the fuck that means. 
means, but yeah. Right. Could you introduce the band, Alex? I would love to, yeah. Uh, we've got um, Ed Sheldrake on piano, a former uh, child. We've got the, um, <laughs> Mark Brown and Joe Auckland, the twins, on horns. <laughs> ben Reynolds, who is the lowly drummer, who's got a star sign. <laughs> Got um, Will Collier on bass, who used to... Well, he, he's a member of the National Front. <laughs> National Trust. <laughs> National Trust. <laughs> <laughs> time to go uh, once again to Dictionary Corner. Alex, what have you got for us this time? Well, Jimmy, I've got a special guest for you. Because it's Christmas, we thought we'd uh, bring along a man, a man who's synonymous with Christmas, with his little f smiley face and his red and white and black outfit. And he's quite... He's actually quite a commercial figure, but we love him. I think everyone loves him, so please welcome Henry. It's Henry. Here he is. It's Henry. Drink it in. It's quite. It's charming and chilling as an image. <laughs> and what he's done, he's, pre he's prepared a song for you, Henry. It's. It's. You're not. Sorry. No. He's prepared a song for you, Jimmy. We do look alike. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Similar hair, Henry. <laughs> Jimmy, can I just say also your laugh, just by the way, we think it's, it's an F sharp. Can you do, have you got it there? Just, it's F sharp. <laughs> you know, I can kind of hear it, though. <laughs> Nose is less of a nose, it's more of a corrugated dust sucking hose. Dust sucking hose. But if you want a spotless carpet, stronger cleaners are on the market. Mike Dyson Dustbuster Douglas of Van Hoover Field and Electrolux Lewis. You you know, like they're actually kind of good though. Like that's kind of like I didn't expect a band on eight out of ten cats does countdown to be good. Like, that's seriously shocking. Like, they're not that bad. Spin me around, I'm quite a mover. Force my nose in your dirty little carpet. I couldn't give a toss, it's quite cathartic. <laughs> Henry Hoover! Henry Hoover! <laughs> okay, Alex, if you had to choose your favourite member of the horn section and your least favourite member, who, who would oh. they be? <laughs> it's a difficult one, really. So I don't really think of them as... But people, they're, they're very much, <laughs> they're sort of colleagues at best and just music machines um, at mm. base level. W Will's a vegetarian, so that's not great. Um, <laughs> my favourite is, um, we've, got a, we've got a guest saxophonist, we've got Pedro on sax, and he's very, he's properly attractive, isn't he? He's, uh, he's very serious, he doesn't speak a lot of English, he's from Birmingham, and he's, um, <laughs> oh damn! And he's got an interesting backstory, but he only speaks through music. Would you like him to tell you about himself with a little song? Oh, yes. It's a, Excellent. He's got a lovely voice. Pedro, do you want to sing your song? <coughs> okay. One, two, three, four. I ain't got Whoa. no story to tell. Ain't, nah, nah, ain't no way. Ain't no way. Like, yo, why the fuck are these people actually good? This is a comedy show. Like, it, it's supposed to be funny because they're bad. What the fuck? Why is this good? Shit makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, what, uh, what sort of music do you like listening to? Well, abbreviated songs, Jimmy. When you stop them too early. You know, when you arrive at your destination, the radio stops early. But sometimes it improves the songs. That's the sort of song I like. I need a couple of examples now. I'm not entirely okay. clear. OK, well, abbreviated songs. I'll do, I'll, I'll do a song by Jarvis Cocker for you. Okay. Joe Cocker. By Joe Cocker. OK, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> What have you guys been up to recently? 
do a lot of five-a-side football on Mondays, and uh, <laughs> Will, the bassist, short for Willip, what Willip does, Willip, um, <laughs> Willip writes adverts. He's written an advert recently for Scotland. It's not, not commissioned, but we're hoping it gets picked up. Do you want to hear the advert for Scotland? Yeah. Yes, OK. Good luck, Willip. Thinking of holidaying in the highlands of Scotland? Think of Glen. Think of Glen. Well, Jimmy, I did some research about Countdown and Dictionary Corner and the music they've had in it. And over the years, they've had some good, you know, they've had Quattro and Wakeman and Digents, but very few uh, drum and bass artists. Like, no, you know, Goldie and Ronnie Sides, but apart from that, hardly anyone in Dictionary Corner. So I thought, <laughs> <laughs> I thought we'd do a bit of drum and bass. OK, take it away. This is drum and bass. A. This bit's just the bass. A. The drum bit will be soon. A. There won't be much of a tune. This is now the drum bit, and although it sounds quite frantic, it's going to get much faster in the bit that comes soon after, and there's sometimes proper singing, but there's never funny singing. Because the drum and bass consumer isn't interested in humour. And now there's some more bass. <laughs> Should be called drum or bass. But soon we'll get them together. And the drums will go hell for leather. Oh! This is drum and bass on Countdown, a bit like Dr. Dre on Fountain. I don't think it's proper music, but lots of people seem to use it. Fabio and Groove Rider, Vorderman and Richard Wiley, letters, numbers, bass and drum kit, and a little man on top of it. <laughs> Consonant. <laughs> Countdown. <laughs> Honestly, this is supposed to be funny. I'm more amazed that they're good. Like, genuinely, they are be- Like, are they a real band? Like, I need to know. Like, are they real? Are they legit? Like, what is- What is the history here? Let me know. Like, because if they are not, like, a legit band, they should be, because they are better than a lot of legit bands I've seen. There ain't no way they're not. Like, there ain't no way. I refuse to believe they're not. Time now to go across to Dictionary Corner. Alex, what have you got for us? Sorry, I'm very hungry, so I thought we'd do some cooking. Right, right. Yeah, sure. We're going to do cooking with music against the clock because it's countdown. So we've got a microwave. So we're going to cook. I'm going to cook a dish for Susie. Oh. Um, you can do this at home if you want. This is. Uh, I'll, I'll instruct you how to do it. It involves, okay. it involves an egg, and we end up with an egg dish. Ready? Yeah. Okay. okay, so here we go. This is how to cook an egg dish. One, Good luck. Two. Pick up an egg, okay, and pick up a cup. Hit it three times so the egg opens up. Pour out the contents and dispose of the shell into a bin. Here you go, mate. Now pick up a <laughs> fork. That's right. Stir it all up. Give it a good old whisk. Make the most of the cup. The yolk and the albumin should now look like like a sort of egg. <laughs> Now go to the microwave and open the door. Put in the cup, then shut the door. <laughs> Type it. Yo, I, I need this to like become a tutorial for how to make shit. Like, Gordon Ramsay needs to hire these people and just his like tutorials needs to be this. I guarantee you people will follow this shit out of it. That needs to be a thing. I, like on some serious shit. In one minute, and when I say now, you can press start. Here we go. Now, pick up a knife, and butter the bread. Creamy and thick, a real generous bread. Pick up the ketchup and top it onto one slice. You're gonna be eating this in a minute. Here we go. Pick up the... Now that's nasty as fuck. I, I refuse to believe that tastes good. What the... Butter and ketchup together, bruh? Hell no. Knife, then pick up the bread. And then change your mind. Put down the bread. Check on the microwave. You should see there's 30 seconds left. We're halfway. Halfway to egg heaven. Now pick up your cup. Because you now want a drink. You can't find the cup. Where is the cup? The cup's in the microwave. <laughs> and that's where the egg is heating up. I think it's going pretty well. You don't need a drink. You just need an egg. The 
check on the clock. Oh, there's ten seconds left. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, eight, eight three, two, one. <laughs> and then you just... And then you just get out of you have this delicious, delicious egg dish here. And this really is a treat for you, Susie. It's, uh, it's like an egg ball. <laughs> <laughs> Put that there. Anyone could do this. And then uh, you just uh, gobble it up, really, once you've cooked it. So there Come we go, on. Susie. I've just become a fruitarian. Have you? <laughs> Not interested. Uh, nah, that, that's nasty. Uh, whoever, whoever tries this will get shouted out. Whoever try, whoever sends me a video of them trying that sandwich will get included into one of my videos. I will include the video of somebody trying that sandwich. I won't do it because I'm way too much of a fucking wimp. But if one of you guys wants to be on the YouTube channel, go for it. <laughs> Well known as quite a top. I feel like I'm going to regret that. <laughs> We've written a song. I feel like I'm going to get like, flooded with people making that so sandwich. What, what you do? <laughs> what you do? When you write a song, the main thing you, what I've learned when you write a song, you, you, you find a word, a good word, and then you find another word that rhymes with that word, and that's, that's how you write a song. So this song is called uh, Chris Hoy Loves the Savoy. <laughs> and, and it's not a true story about how Chris Hoy became a knight. So, well, take it away. Okay. Chris Hoy ate a jumbo saveloy on the morning of the race. Hey. Well, it didn't work at all because he broke the golden rule and he finished in last place. Oh. The next time he competed, yet again he put the meat in <laughs> another saveloy for Hoy. He decided that his pedals and earned him enough medals and saveloys brought more joy. Because mm. Chris Hoy loves a saveloy, he's such a naughty boy. <laughs> His wife gets quite annoyed. Chris Hoy, Hoy, Hoy loves a saveloy. He loves a saveloy. But what? then one day a letter came from Her Majesty the Queen. Alrighty. He was to be knighted and he got quite excited so he gave his bike a clean. But when he turned up at the palace, Dizzy Lizzy was embarrassed. She'd forgotten her sword. He said, don't you worry, pet. A substitute I'll get, I'll still become a lord. He opened up his panniers, they were full of jumbo bangers. <laughs> there were sausages galore. <laughs> she pulled out a whopper, he got down off his chopper and knelt down on the floor. Bruh. A writer boy of Savaloy, you're <laughs> such a clever man. Won't you put your sausages in the royal pan? The rice of boy of Savaloy, you're not a naughty boy. You're not. You've brought us so much joy. Chris Hoy 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 loves a Savaloy. He loves a Savaloy. Chris Hoy. <laughs> I told the whole section, everyone. What an amazing, amazing fucking band this guy has. Like, honestly, I felt like I felt m like I spent more time in this video just being impressed by the fact that his band was actually good than being entertained by the funniness. Not that it wasn't funny, but I just didn't expect his band to be good. So, it, like, I didn't expect him to have a band at all, but still, like, I just... If he had a band, I didn't expect it to be good. <laughs> Either way, I really had fun. So give me a fat ass like, comment, subscribe. You know how YouTube works. And I'm out. Bye. <laughs>